Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to Microsoft OneNote and then at the end I'll share a few tips of how I use it in my own practice. So the first thing that we need to do is within our team we need to create our class notebook. So at the top here next to files it will say class notebook, we're going to click on that right there and we're going to set up a OneNote class notebook. So we're going to start off from a blank notebook. Now. The blank notebook is going to be made in sections. You're going to have a collaboration space, a content library, a teacher only section and student notebooks. So the collaboration space is where everyone can work together. Content library is where you will upload content, but the students cannot edit that. A teacher only section is basically for your eyes only and student notebooks is where it's one to one between the teacher and the corresponding student. So we're going to go ahead and click next. Now within teams, it's going to suggest certain sections for each student to have. Now I'm going to get rid of handouts and quizzes and I'm going to add a section called exam questions. I'm going to go ahead and create my class notebook for each student. So our class notebook is now ready. We're going to click on this navigation button right here and you will see the different sections that have already been created. So we have our collaboration space and so on and so on. In this team, I have students which are George and Yusuf. So if I click on both of them, they will have the sections that I have created. Within each other section, you'll have a help sheet and you can read that in your own time. So the first thing that I want to explain to you is that these are the sections and we can add and remove sections by clicking add section here or by right clicking on a certain section and then deleting it. So I'm going to show you that right there, right click and then permanently delete. If I wanted to, or the students wanted to create different sections, all they would have to do is click on the add section button and make it a topic, let's say forces. And you can base this on how you'd like it in your own, uh, in your own subject area. So for the content library, I would usually put it into physics, chemistry, biology for science, and you could apply that to every other subject. Now within each section, you will have pages. So if I click on content library, which is what I'm sharing with the students, but they can't edit, I'll add a page and I'll call it lesson one. So I've titled it lesson one. Now in this Teams app, we have OneNote embedded. So right now I'm working on OneNote within Teams. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into the OneNote app. Now if you download the OneNote app on your computer, it's a bit more easier than working in Teams, but you can carry on working in Teams. It's the same functions. It's just, I prefer working on the app. So I'm going to click on file and I'm going to edit in the desktop app. Okay. So now I am in the desktop app. It just looks a bit more cleaner. It's bigger and it's easier for me to see, but you can easily carry on within the teams app. It's the exact same. I can resume editing here if I wanted to. So within this now, I'm going to show you how we basically format our pages. So I've got my lesson title there. I can add other pages if I wanted to or I could delete them if I wanted to literally by right clicking and then having all these options, delete page. For some reason, if a student did want to copy a page from the content library, they can copy it, go into their own forces page and then paste it right there. So that's a little quick tip if someone wants to save some time. So lesson one, first thing I'll do is I'll make a heading. I'll call it um, physics and I will click on heading I'll make it heading three. I can then add my text. So my learning objectives, which are one, two, and three. And then I can carry on saying, uh, writing down text. So hello, this is Peru. Nice and easy. Now you can imagine that when I hover over this, everything is put into boxes. So you have infinite space within the notebook and you can move anything around. Now I can also add um, titles, I can also add cells, I can attach pictures. So if I want to att attach a cell, let's say I don't want to do it in this box, I want to do it here. So I'll click on insert table and I can choose my table there and you can choose and edit that however you want. So I'll keep the table there, I'll keep it nice and orderly. I can also attach pictures. So I will attach a picture there. I again click on insert click on pictures. Now you can choose from camera if you're working on a device. I'm going to choose from file and I will choose this picture here 
and then I can expand this. I'll place that right here. I can also insert a picture from online. So it will open up a little section here and I'll put in car. Let's put this one in. It's pretty nice. And then I'll place that picture underneath it there. Expand that. I can also attach documents and documents are very good because then you can later on edit them. So I'll insert a printout or a file. Now you can attach a file and insert it as a PDF. It's if you try to attach a Word document, it will ask to be converted into PDF. So click OK and go for it. So let's just go to this one here. And I'm going to insert it as a printout so that I can see it on the notebook. OK, so now my document has been inserted. If I zoom out, that's basically my class notebook there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also insert it as a Word document here just to show you that it does convert. So I can do it straight away as a printout, but it'll want it as a, and it will ask, I'll click printout, and then it will convert it into a PDF, and then I have the same file again. I can also attach videos. So I want to attach a video for my class to see. Now I've got a video I've got prepared here going to click that in there press ok and now I can expand this and I don't need to count I, I don't need to have that there I can click on the link and it'll take me to the link again but I can get rid of this and then I can play the video within the class notebook as soon as can play this and rewind just as they would if they were on YouTube I can also attach audio files so i'm going to click on audio right there it's starting to record my voice now i will then click stop and that's now a video uh, sorry an audio file I can play that and i can hear that i don't know if you guys can hear that but i will now delete that file and you can move content around so i can move this around i can also use the lasso function here and if i want to grab a large amount of items I can move them all around okay so now I've switched to my tablet to just show off another feature of OneNote which is basically the pen support and inking so to draw I can now use my pen I can draw I can rub out I can lasso certain stuff and move that around and then annotate so nice car uh, and I'm just going to show you a few of the pages that I use so for example if I go into my so I have all my notebooks here all the sections and all the pages so this is just a page where I will write out some notes um, and then if you go into for example uh, a document that you've uploaded you can then annotate the, doc uh, the document you can you know basically just highlight with all these functions here so I can just highlight and then this is very good for basically just modeling exam questions and you know going through content I usually just share my screen and then go through um, the questions with the students you can, and you can also change to grid lines if you wanted to do some maths so some graph work or you could also change your view into just rule lines so this is just a view of what it would look like on a device. And if I go back to Teams, the way you would access the OneNote is literally just by going into the test team, going to more and right. So you will see it there. And then I can open up this class notebook and then it will open up in the OneNote app. Okay, so I'm now back in the desktop app. Um, to show you how you would use the draw functions if you didn't have a tablet, which a lot of people wouldn't have access to. So by clicking on draw here and removing yourself from uh, the text function, you can then use any of these functions to draw, to write down anything, to highlight. Now what I usually do is I would use this on documents and I would use the highlighter to highlight any important information, annotate the diagram, 
or if I wanted to add some text, I could just add it right there. Uh, if I want to give some feedback to a student next to their work. So I can put that there and then using the home, I can make that bold or change the color. So it's very simple, very self-explanatory once you, you know, have a look at what's on the top here. Um, you also have the function to create extra space where you wouldn't think you'd have it. So using this function here, extra space, I can drag that down and now I've got some extra space there to work with. So I'm going to show you the shapes functions. Literally click on any shape you want. You can also have ink to shape. So I can draw using ink to shape triangle and it will just change it into a shape for me. Like so. We also have the ink to text function here, but that's if you were to write down using a, a tablet and then you can select the area and click ink to text. And obviously that, that hasn't worked very well, <laughs> but uh, you get the idea. Um, there's also this max function here. Now this is very nice. So I'm going to create some extra space here um, because I want to use that space. And I'm going to write down an equation. So I'll keep it very nice and simple. Maths equation 8x equals 4. And this could be questions that you've written. <clears throat> and if the student or the teacher wants to go through this, you can click on the maths function and they can select an action. So it's recognized that it's 8x plus 4. I can now solve for x. So it's giving me a solution uh, and the answer. I can show the steps. So it's now showing me the steps to calculate this question. And then I can generate a practice quiz based on this question. So I will make it a little bit more difficult. I'll use 2x plus 10 equals 24. And before I get into that, I'm just going to show you in the view function here, you have the ability to insert other symbols, equations, and the math function is also there. But that I'll leave that to maths teachers or anyone else who's got any maths involved to roam around there. So I'm going to click on this one here and I'm going to generate a practice quiz based on that. Um, and you can choose, this is now going to be linked to Microsoft Forms and the forms will be uploaded into your OneNote there. So I'll keep it very simple, I'll just make it two questions. Generate the quiz. And it's basing it on that question that it's done there. I'll make, move this to a respectable area. So I've got two questions there. Now you can play write down one. One note will then automatically give you the solutions, generate a quiz for you. The students can fill this out and they can submit it. Now this will be linked to your forms account, which I'll explain in the uh, in a later week. But then the students can basically just view their results. It's automatically marked. So I've obviously got both of them wrong. Um, and then this is saved for them in their one note in their page and then next week you can go into another lesson and you can do the exact same thing and you can make as many equations as you want. So that's basically just how you would use the maths function and forms within OneNote. Um, and this is a part that I'd like to just quickly touch over the final part. I can imagine this video is quite boring for you guys now, but please do stick with it. So if you have some text um, in your OneNote and a student is um, finding it difficult to read it. <clears throat> so I've got my text here. Everything that is in this OneNote, if I click on view and click on the immersive reader, it will open it and it can I can then ask OneNote to basically play it for me and read it for me. So I can change the text, I can change the background. So I know some students who have dys uh, dyslexia cannot see on the white background, so they can change their colors. And then you can play the uh, the video. So if I click play here, it's now reading everything for me. I don't think you guys can hear this, but you can try it out. And then I pause and you can change the settings here for the speed of the voice and then male or female. So it's pretty good there. And you can also click on certain sections and then use the translate function. So I know I have some students who probably are very weak in uh, English and um, they might need translation. So I can click on translate. So I'll do a selection instead of a page. So I'll do the selection which I've chosen there. And then I can change it to any language that I want. So I'll just go with 
what my students are. Uh, let's, let's just do Italian. And it's right there. And I can insert that there instead. So in their notebook, um, I can copy the same stuff but translate it, or they can translate it themselves. And finally, if I wanted to share this page, I would just click here share i can either send someone a link so that they can have access and then edit any file or any uh, any pages with me i can send them a copy of the page or what i usually do is click on the three dots print and i basically just print it out as a pdf so i've got all my pages there and just a final example of how i use this with one of my classes so currently 11y1 each student has their own so that's content library where i've uploaded my stuff um, but I'm just going to show you inside, for example, Karthik. So he's made all these folders there and he basically just uploads pictures of his notes um, and then he does his exam questions and he's marked them. So this is just each student has their own little section that they upload and um, it's just easy to record and keep on top of.